Hey gang, we all know Spotify is the best and most popular music streaming app. They have millions of songs by millions of artists available at your fingertips. But did you know that aside from millions of songs, Spotify also has thousands of podcasts? That's right, there are thousands of podcasts on there. Your favorites are on there. Wait, wait, don't tell me. Fresh Air. Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend. And of course, How Did I Get Here? That's right, we are on Spotify. Just go to Spotify.com or download the app from your app store. And don't forget to follow How Did I Get Here? That's Spotify. Millions of songs, now thousands of podcasts. Let's get down. You may ask yourself. Did I get here? And now here is your host. I'm Bobby. When we talk. All right, hello, I'm Johnny. I'm your host. Welcome to the show. I hope you guys have all hope you guys are all safe and sane and healthy. Uh, sanity is the one that's been that's been elusive at this time, you know? I've been talking about that this whole time, but now we're getting into like the second month of this thing. You're, you know, you're easing into this new lifestyle. I've been taking naps every day at 11 for the last like three days, which is just weird. It is weird. So uh, I've been taking naps at 11 every day. And, you know, people are taking these walks. I'm calling them sanity walks. People are like, oh, yeah, man, I just got to get outside and walk around. And you do need to get outside and walk around. Enjoy the outside and remember that there's a world going on out there, even though it is that we even though we do have to stay inside and and keep to ourselves and keep our distancing there's still a world out there and nature's still going there's still ants biting your ankles if you stand in one place for too long in the grass there's still mosquitoes there's still bugs that fly into your face they're they're still out there so so get out there and enjoy them there's birds chirping birds are singing maybe you're listening to this podcast during one of your sanity walks Maybe tell me how it goes. Write me. How did I get here? Facebook page. Gang, don't forget to go to the How Did I Get Here Facebook page and check in. Like the page. I also want to remind you guys something real quick. We are now on YouTube. So if you do your business on YouTube and listen to stuff on YouTube and watch stuff on YouTube and you have a YouTube account, I will put a link to this on our How Did I Get Here Facebook page to our YouTube channel, Johnny Gowdy, or you can just look up How Did I Get Here. This is episode 910. So we're also on Spotify. We're on Stitcher. We're on TuneIn. We're on Overcast. The reason why I'm bringing this up is you should, if you're into the show, subscribe to one of those, whichever one it is that you listen to your podcast on. Apple Podcasts, we're on that. Uh, Whichever one you listen to the podcast on, get on there, follow it, leave us a comment if you can. It helps our ratings so we can get better advertising. I don't know. I I don't know, man. This advertising thing is starting to slip a little bit. Throughout this coronavirus, people aren't as free with their dough as they once were. Well, which, speaking of which, if you do want to donate to the podcast, this has always been available for free. I put, I've been putting out three shows a week throughout this coronavirus era of our of our lives. Um, it, there's a link in the body of this podcast if you want to toss a little donation. There's a Venmo and PayPal account on there if you want to do that. If you are so inclined. If not, keep on listening to the show, man. It's free. It's here for your entertainment. I talk to musicians all the time, and today is no different than any other day. Today, Noel Hampton and Andre Moran from the band The Bell Sounds return to the show. They've been on the show tons of times, but today is a very special day because today they're dropping a brand new single called Golden Hour. It's now available. Go to thebellsounds.com, but it's probably available wherever it is you stream and download your jams. Go to Spotify if you're listening to this. Check out Golden Hour. It's a gorgeous song. Andre and Noel have uh, have moved their business into sort of this single release thing, and they've been trying to release a single pretty much every month of this year, or every six weeks or something. And they're doing a great job of it. They have the the their last single, "Lucid Dream," came out in March. "I Lose Myself" came out in February. "Light It Up" came out in October. Uh, some of these songs are a little more electronic. If you're a Bell Sounds fan, they're a little bit more, a little different than the normal Bell Sounds. Noelle's been exploring sort of electronic recording on her own and then bringing it to Andre and bringing it to, uh, I think Danny Reich was who they worked with on one of the tunes, and getting them to do the stuff. They've had some success. They had a tune on uh, Outer Banks on Netflix recently. I think it was like last week or something it dropped. And uh, anyway, I love Noelle and, and Andre. They are, they are just fabulous people. 
And it's funny because I told them, I, I always think of them as like new to town, but they've been here for like 20 years or something now. So I, uh, I, I thought it was funny. Like I even brought that up during the thing, but I always think of them as new to town, but they're, they're just amazing people. They're super talented. They're super loving. They're super giving. And, uh, and they're great hangs. We have a great conversation. Noelle doesn't really hide any of her feelings at all. She, she's very open about what's been going on. She's been having a hard time creating and feeling like, you know, there are a lot of artists and I've been having that too. I've been having a hard time finishing songs and there is this feeling of like, well, now I have this time. I need to make my, my manifesto. But it's hard to sort of like be in the middle of like a panic attack that lasts since, you know, the beginning of March to try and write like the best shit you've ever written. It's a little difficult. But anyway, Andre and Noel working on tunes, putting them out. I think they were working on putting together a live stream or doing something like that sometime soon, maybe for the release. Go to thebellsounds.com for all of your Bell Sounds needs. And please enjoy my conversation with my dear friends who I love very, very much. Andre Moran, Noel Hampton, The Bell Sounds. Let's get down. guys uh stay insane <laughs> yeah i think so can i ask you a question? <laughs> what's it like being locked in with somebody else <laughs> <laughs> i've been sick for two weeks yeah um, no yeah i think it's just a cold but you know it's so yeah <laughs> i haven't been sleeping in the same bed as yeah. in, just in case but yeah, we're still in the same. Had, he had COVID nineteen. Yeah, or... we're in the same house, and you know, we have one bathroom. And... <laughs> yeah, yeah, guys, we're we're trapped. Do you, no, do you... it's it, it's lovely. I mean, we 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 are fine, and we go to our separate corners and do our separate things. That's anyway. what I was going to ask. Yeah, yeah, totally. I watch TV. He works on the computer, or basically, he goes and like I see him in there watching nerdy guitar tone videos for hours. <laughs> But, but what's what's new? <laughs> yeah, at least it's not That's what porn. I always do. It's not porn. I, I will say one of the good things that has come out of the quarantine is Paul Stanley himself on YouTube taught me how to play Love Gun the other day. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Personally. I just sat in bed. This one's for you, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was teaching anyone that wanted to learn, and you could still oh, do cool. it. But it was it was pretty exciting. <laughs> I saw that uh, Johnny Marr was doing that. He was doing like you know in his studio, and he's like, "Okay, ask me questions," and then he's sitting there playing, you know, all of this, <laughs> all the classic Smith stuff. So it's kind it's of cool. a pretty weird time, isn't it? It's super weird. Yeah, um, it's it's super weird. Andre's teaching his uh, <laughs> Andre's teaching his recording classes online now, which is kind of yeah, which is crazy. And I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do that in the summer too. Their uh, ACC is online, so it's interesting. I mean, on, on one hand, what's weird is it works because I'm I you know when I lecture, it's just I'm talking to them and showing right. them slides and shit and telling them about mics. You know, obviously we can't do any of the hands-on like let's mic a guitar amp let's record drums let's do something so i don't know that's the frustrating part so yeah yeah but we haven't done any uh like we haven't done any facebook live or anything i don't know there's a lot of facebook live happening right now there's a lot i'm feeling like it's a little saturated market and so i don't know that that's the thing for us we'll see i i i had that feeling as well and then i did one and it 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 wasn't i had a lot of reservations and I, how did it go it was really fun good <laughs> i had a really well, we good did, time we yeah. did that lullabies thing but yeah. that wasn't live that was yeah recorded. we taped ourselves yeah. for a couple things um but yeah i mean i'm up, i'm up for it it's just like i don't know there's just a lot going on and i haven't felt super creative right now yeah just, i feel weird as a as a listener as like a music fan i i don't engage with the facebook live thing like i see everybody posting and then i'm just like yeah okay whatever okay uh, whatever <laughs> you know i feel like yeah. an asshole but, it's not for everyone 
Yeah. Do you know what was? I definitely like? miss going out to a club and hearing live music. So. Yeah. A, a friend of mine was saying the other day, he was like, "Do you think this is ultimately really bad because?" people are you're training people that they don't have to leave like when it was hard enough to get people to come out and see your band now you're like dude right. you, you can do this in your underwear like, <laughs> i'm not wearing pants yeah exactly like you, you could you could you don't have to do anything anymore to come see a band play and i was right. like no i kind of feel worse because after that one i did the other night i was like it's kind of draining me that i don't have yeah. to go out and slap a bunch of gear places and yeah. stuff <laughs> Oh so man, true. it's true, but God, I miss the band. Yeah, I miss it too, yeah. I miss yeah. the band. I miss yeah. the rock and roll. I miss the big sound on stage and my people with the harmonies and Emily and Greg and Jim and and you know, I just miss that sound. I miss the whole thing. It's it's fun with Andre, but you know, we don't have <laughs> we don't have that thing that's the bell sounds, which yeah. is the two of us. Yeah. Especially for the newer material. Do you that like that's off. interesting that you say that because uh this newer material all of it is definitely uh, uh, you. You guys are creative. You're you're in creative motion. You know what you're. Yes, you know, yeah, or you're in motion a, creatively. Yeah, that's and a nice way of saying that everything sounds really different from each other, isn't it? <laughs> I, I don't mean it bad. <laughs> you're like you're in motion, people. but sometime you'll get there. <laughs> sometime you'll arrive. You're in motion. Where are you going? <laughs> no, I meant it in like a Bowie way. That was like the okay. highest compliment I can give you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. No. I'm just kidding. Yeah. We're, we're, I love what you guys are trying to do. We're, <laughs> we're feeling. We're feeling. Um. We're feeling definitely some new new energy around this stuff, but um, it really came from my finally learning how to use logic on my home computer. So I finally was able to construct songs as I would want to hear them essentially. And then taking them out to Andre and taking them to the Congress house and really like refining them and yeah, shaping them. But it allowed me to use like beats and samples and things right. like that, that I hadn't been able to use before, but always heard in my head, you know, it seems like those are more prevalent in those first two that I lose myself and light it up. For sure. Did you did, and, talk talk me through how you how you did that? So light it up. Um, it, yeah, both of them were pretty similar. I basically constructed the whole song here. Um, light it up. We did it with Danny Reich. So we ended up taking those tracks to Danny um, in Lockhart and kind of deconstructed, reconstructed. He took my loops that I'd made and kind of made his own versions of those, like using real live drums and using other stuff and make it a bunch of percussion tracks. And um, I mean, he spent like an entire afternoon doing percussion tracks and stuff for that. Yeah. Um, but so he was very meticulous about that track, just kind of getting the mechanical part of it to work. Um, and then, but we kept so, like, we kept my guitar, my guitar solo. It was the only time I've ever had a guitar solo in a song. It's a that's, pretty pretty damn good one, Mike. Yeah, that's yeah, it's really good. Yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the demo. That's and the demo. The bass, yeah, the, the bass, bass was the uh, demo. Greg came over here and just, you know, he did it at the house yeah. in Logic. And then, you know, I just exported everything from Logic, brought it over to Danny. And then he, he just, just made it shine. He made it, he yeah. ran it through all kinds of things and made it sound yeah, way and better. And he stripped some stuff out and then chopped it up and processed it and moved it around. And, you know, yeah. and, and then we, we recut vocals, which we've yeah. been doing for everything. I've been recutting vocals no matter what. Yeah. Um, Emily came down. Yeah, and Emily her came. Vocal. Uh, we added a bunch of synth stuff at his place because he's got a bunch of cool. Oh, uh, that's cool. Now. So, like, the, there's that line in the chorus that's like a, uh, the art. Um, Selena, that's really fun. And I just love that. I mean, for me, that's like a dream is having everything plugged in. Every mm -hmm. keyboard is plugged in and, and there's a speaker in the room and you just go, and, is this the right sound? And you just play it and it comes out the speaker, you know, and yeah, you know, and stuff like that. It's just, you, you know, that's not right. Okay, go over here, try that keyboard, try this keyboard. And so we, we wanted to to work with him, but he was getting ready to be <clears throat> super busy, which I'm not sure now, now what he's doing, but um you know, that was kind of sad because we'd been waiting all these years to have some material to like work with Danny Reich because I love what he does. Um, and then it just yeah. it just was the timing was not right. But now everything's come to a halt. So I don't really know. But we got going on our own after that because we thought, OK, well, we'll just produce it on our own. Um, so I lose myself was basically the same formula. We just kind of took the, the tracks and the loops 
uh, Andre shined them all up. Um, and we got Emily to come down and, and Greg to come down. That's kind of what we've been doing is just have them come play their, their parts because we already have drums. We also use a session drummer in Nashville that we've used on every record. Um, his name is Evan Hutchings. Yeah. So we just send stuff to him cause he really gets our, gets our yeah. thing. He played on lucid dream. Yeah. Uh, yes. And he played over the loop that we already had. So that's kind of, it's been he our formula. We've been playing. Lose myself. Too, right? yeah he yeah. played on unloose myself yeah so yeah man we're just trying to make it like efficient uh cool like inclusive with our you know our a new th it's it's like it's us it's me it's us it's like we're just kind of keeping it insular in a way it's like this little pod this little like nice creative pod that yeah. we're in and um and it feels good and uh, i don't know that's just how we're rolling it seems like you're also getting a good balance of getting some outside perspective as well, you know, because sometimes there's a there's there there's there's greatness and dangers in both. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's hard, you know, because, yeah, we we've questioned ourselves a couple of times going, well, should we you know, should we send the mix to somebody else? Make sure it's not we're not just trapped in our little bubble, our little headspace. But then, you know, it's the thing you're 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 inviting outside opinions is that really what you need, you know, or, or do you really feel like, nah, you know, between the two of us, we can balance, you know, the creative vision. <laughs> well, you, you <laughs> and of course, I mean, the band's involved too, but then, you know, in a what, band, you've got well, five opinions. Yeah. It's then, too many cooks in yeah, the kitchen at a certain cooks. point. You have to, you have to have somebody or two people to say, this is what is, is happening. Yeah. For good or for bad. You know, I mean, think about how many tracks you've made that later on you were like, damn, I wish I'd done something differently on that. Or, you know, maybe you haven't. Maybe you have no regrets about tracks. But oh, I, I have no I have. regrets about any stuff. I've done. <laughs> Anything. This is awesome. I'm sitting by myself in an apartment <laughs> with the talk show I gave myself on the internet. <laughs> I don't regret any any of my any of my moves or choices. <laughs> Good job, Johnny. Oh my god. Yeah. I mean, I think even if we asked somebody what they thought, they would if they gave us an opinion, we didn't use it, then what? Like, then it's like, oh, we kept it the same. Sorry. <laughs> we, yeah. Yeah. we took your advice, <laughs> but we didn't actually do it. So, and thanks for know. chiming in. Yeah, thanks for chiming in. <laughs> well, that I mean, that speaks volumes to, to Andre, to like the kind of person and engineer that you are, that you're, you, not only do you teach other people how to do it, but you're still open enough to learn from other people. Because I'm sure when you went and worked uh, with Danny, both of you guys, but definitely a guy that does the same thing that Danny does as a job is like, Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Oh yeah. I mean, that's been, you know, it's been cool working with, you know, David Boyle and, you know, David and I would like sit at the console and, you know, listen to mics and, you know, <laughs> like, what do you think? Well, what do you think? You know? And, <laughs> Nerds. and yeah. And uh, Noel would have to crack the whip and go, come on, let's get some work done. <laughs> you know? Stop talking about gear. Well, let me ask you this. When you're working on your own stuff, do you find it harder to let go? You know, because sometimes I've seen it doesn't happen to me as much as I've seen it happen to my friends that are doing their thing on their own and they just can't let go. And then like just years go by and they're like, I'm still trying to get that kick drum right. <laughs> yeah. I mean? yeah, we're not we're not having that anymore. We used to when we yeah, were first recording I, I, together. We did. Oh, yeah. We were we were just shooting ourselves on our foot left and right back then and in our twenties and stuff. That's the funny thing I think for us um, because we started out by necessity recording ourselves and but we had just started playing together and we were in our twenties and it was hard you know it was, you know being a couple and doing that and so then we were like after we, we made a whole record and then went okay next time we do something we have to get somebody else involved <laughs> right yeah, yeah. And, that, that, and that was <laughs> that was mark uh mark Hallman, you know well we uh, had some other people previously we tried but no i mean back yeah. in california we did have other people involved but, yeah but we would still yeah. grab the you know yeah, they were we like, ah, right, your mix right. sucks move over yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh yeah mark was really the first person that we're like okay man you're the producer you know you tell us what we should do. And uh, we really try to embrace that. We had a couple things where we're like, oh, maybe we should. Well, we know. can't help our yeah. personality and I wouldn't want to push right. the squish that down. You know, you want to, you want to have your, your imprint on something. It's your shit, you know? So right. you have yeah. to be present 
I mean, yeah. I feel like you have to be present. I wouldn't want anyone to railroad me or do anything like that. But I, we ha we have always welcomed other people's creative input. Oh yeah. But right now, out of necessity and kind of um, <clears throat> financial necessity too, we're we're yeah. hunkered down and doing this our own way. And you know, we're moving through it. And thank God, we recorded a ton of stuff in like November and December. So right now we have already like we have two more tracks that are basically ready to go. Like Andre just has to do final mixes on them that already have Emily and Greg and the whole thing on them. So we have these tracks, which gave us some time during this whole COVID nightmare to kind of feel like we can still put out a track a month, you know, because by the time we're back to recording with humans, which hopefully yeah. will be soon, we'll be ready for that a couple of months down the line, you know, so I was grateful that we got on the ball in, in the winter time because yeah. we really had this intention to do this song a month and I didn't want to, you know, already be bailing out on that intention in the beginning of the year. So Right. So the first of the uh, Light It Up came out in October and then uh, Lose Myself came out in February. Lucid Dream came out in March and now Golden Hour comes out in April. Yeah, 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 we yeah. skipped the winter time because that's winter time. I understand. <laughs> nobody nobody wants any any new pop music. They just want <laughs> to listen to Mariah Carey's All I Want Christmas. for Christmas song <laughs> for the eight thousand billionth time. So yeah, we we bailed on that and then we just started February and yeah, we'll hopefully we'll be able to go through the end of the year. Um I have a bunch of other songs that we have to record. Uh we just have to get in and start doing them. But yeah, Golden Hour, um, we weren't sure when we were going to put it out. We were originally going to put it out later in the summer just because of what kind of song it is. But um, we sort of by necessity had to put something out this month and it was the most ready. And it's such a different song. I mean, it kind of goes back to more of like our older stuff, but it's so beautiful. And I love the way it, it turns out. It has a sunset vibe to it. I could see it coming <laughs> out at the end of summer like, hey, you know. Yeah. yeah, sounds I was going just, down, I, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's really a pretty song, and I just wanted to put out something like lovely right now, and then the the next song after this is like super pop, like kind of Peter Gabriel, Kate Bushy. So it will get back to all oh, that. Oh, really? Shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it makes it makes makes it makes me think of like 1986 or something, yeah. 1985. I don't know. It's, we really went there too with it. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> the song just invited us and we said, okay, yeah, yeah. You know, let's go there. And so, yeah, that's all like program drums. And, yeah. It's all everything. Yeah. That song I did every single thing on logic without ever playing an instrument. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I didn't even play a synth part or anything. They were all samples. I just chopped them all up and put them in there. And, and I love the way that one comes out. That comes out yeah. in May. Are those songs hard to translate? Cause I know I've done stuff that I've felt leans way harder on an electronic tip and then you record it like that it? and it has this vibe yeah. and then you bring it to a band and you're like well <laughs> yeah that's what i was trying to avoid the whole time with all those I, drum machines i i spent my january racking my brain january and february racking my brain like how are we going to play these songs all of them uh, you know, when we get live with the bell sounds and I broke it all down and I went on the, cause I have two synths, one Emily uses and one I use and they're the same. So I spent like a month programming Emily's to have the right sounds and programming mine to have the right sounds and I can do this and you can do this and we'll kind of cop this by <laughs> doing, you know, that sort of thing. And then we got one of those Roland, the Roland, uh, the know, SPD yeah. the sampling drum pad thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been programming in like the parts that, we absolutely can't cover and the loops that we want in there. And then Jim triggers that and plays live drums against that. So we have like the extra parts in there, sure. but it's not, we're not doing yeah. any like background vocals or anything in there. It's just like, right. right. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I assume by your uh, saying that you don't have background vocals in there. Was this something you ever saw yourself doing? You mean you mean without the band? Playing, or like, no, 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 no. I mean, oh. like, like being a band going on stage and playing to tracks, which you're, it isn't. It's obviously it's not frowned upon anymore. Right. Yeah. No. I. I never. I never thought it was that odd. I always thought it was kind of cool when bands okay. did it. So yeah, I. I was always open to it, but I didn't have the technology yet, and we're just. I feel like we're just catching up. Like we're so way behind on all this stuff. But it's fun to to be able to have these 
things as options when you go on stage. Yeah. Because I want it to sound like, oh, you know, like that. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, I want it to have those those things that make it so special. Yeah. So. I mean, it is a little weird, right? Because especially, I remember, you know, in, in the '90s, like if you had a synthesizer on stage, it was a bad yeah, thing. You know, was gonna, like, yeah. You've got to be guitars, man. <laughs> you know, and, and definitely like that self-consciousness of like, oh God, are people going to judge us if we have a <laughs> keyboard, you know, a sequence on stage? But that's the cool thing with all of the EDM and, you know, electronic music and pop music in general is that now it's like, hey, where's your laptop? Yeah. Well, but, also- also, but you only have one laptop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's funny because I, I also came through the thing. I remember going to Showcase in L.A., which was where I first saw this happen. And we we went to Showcase and went in a few days before, and we would go see bands. And we went to the Viper Room to see this other band showcase. Mm. And we're watching these 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 four dudes, the drummer, bass player, two guitar players, and there's like they kick into the chorus, and there's like organ and fucking the all these backing vocals that are insane, <laughs> and like tambourine and stuff. And we're like, what the? Because but at that time nobody did that because the technology, only very famous people did it. Yeah, you know what I mean. It was very hard. And then there was also like this Millie Vanilli vibe to it that you didn't want to. <laughs> sure. Yeah. You didn't want to get caught, of, right? Yeah. And then, like, later on, it started becoming more acceptable. I remember when I played in Endosheen, they did it. Really? Now they, yeah, they did it in a song that changed time signatures. <laughs> and let me just tell you something. It never – somebody never had to push stop on the thing at some point. <laughs> we never made it all the way through with the recording thing. Yeah, well, that that's – the trick is, like, either to have a sample that runs continuously and the drummer can stop – start it or someone can start it and stop it fine that's one option option two is what we're doing which is for mo- for the most part we're loading the entire song as the song onto the thing so it has a it has a click and then we start and right. we all but we have to stay on it and we have to hear it that's the thing yeah, yeah. we have to all be able to really yeah. hear that yeah. so totally. you need a good sound system you can't play at some janky club and have you can't do you know. that in the front room of the hole in the wall. No offense to that room, but there's a certain Although that show. room sounds pretty good for like a oh. solo uh, singer songwriter. That room sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Dude, but in, yeah, no. I, I've done like a full on rock band and seen a full on rock band with Marshall half stacks and everything in that front room. Yes. And oh my God. I, I have this faith in that room that that's one of the only rooms where it's if you go with the room, you can have transcendent moments. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's a really cool room. We played there with Jesse Napier, but it was during one of those like torrential downpour storms last oh. year. And it was raining so hard. And because they had dug that giant hole next to it for that hotel or whatever they're building, the hole in the wall was like starting to sink. So the water was coming in and flooding in that front room yeah. of the hole in the wall. By the bar. Right, right. And like crazy. our gear was all sitting there, and we're just, it was just insane. We're, I remember it was just so yeah, I mean, there was old water in front Austin. of the stage, and there yeah. were like you know, all the cords, the yeah. mic cords, and it's like, are we gonna die? Are we gonna get electrocuted? <laughs> is this the way we end? Yeah, this is how we're gonna go. But then, yeah, the show was great, yeah, it was, it was awesome. Really it sounded cool. great. Yeah. But we were supposed to have our residency, you were gonna be playing with us. This I know, month. I know, yeah. at, uh, at the, it actually at wasn't it last week. I it would have been the first, you were the first week of April. Yeah. You were supposed to be the fourth or something. Yeah, I got the, uh, it popped up on my Google calendar and made me sad. <laughs> I know, oh. <laughs> it made me sad too, because I wanted to jam with you and sing some harmonies. Me too. As well. But hopefully, you know, if we can all come out of this and if one-to-one can come out of this, we can pick it right back up. I hope they can. You know, thank you for all the work you've done for them. I saw that you started a GoFundMe that's a yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I figured we all just pick a club, and I mean, it's not you know, it wasn't anything personal. I just love one to one, and because they were they've been there for us since the get go, and they had us scheduled for this amazing residency, and they just allow always allow us to put together whatever kind of bill or whatever kind of thing we show we want to put on, and and so I wanted to do something for them, but I was glad to see that people picked it up for the Saxon and Cheer Up Charlie's and Continental and all these clubs like right. radio that have these different GoFundMe's going. Sure. And I mean, with them, there's also, I, I know, and it's no secret, I think, to anyone, it's not been easy for them to keep their doors open. 
and yeah. still give a home to everyone and not like send people away and be like, no, sorry, this is all like, uh, you know, whatever the latest thing is going to be that gets people in there, you know? Yeah, exactly. They've stuck it's by their guns. Inclusive. They've... It's very inclusive. It's not like a hipster based situation. It's like just good music, good people, great sound. Yeah. For everybody, you know, <laughs> a hipster based situation. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a new genre of music. <laughs> non hipster based. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a hipster based situation. No, it's not one of. I'm actually writing that down. Situation. That's the best thing I've heard all day. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, the other thing too is like doing, doing, like playing the tracks in Austin. It's not just us and the way that we feel and stuff. It's like you don't want Steve Wertheimer coming in and you're and you're playing to some tracks or Wayne Nagel or something. Like there's still yeah. guys out there that you feel would yell at you after the show or something. <laughs> Yeah, I guess, but I guess I just don't care. I mean, I, we're so much more pop than so many bands in Austin. You know, we have such a pop side to us, you know, that that we're already in some, talking about genre, genre, like, who, what, let's play name that genre because yeah. what the fuck are we? I have no idea what we are. Literally, I have no idea what we are, but I think we don't care. Yeah. But the fact, like, you know, the whole thing with genres and that, like, there is a, an alternative pop genre. Oh, totally. Like it's like a it's an oxymoron, right? Like alternative pop. Like But that's what but that's <laughs> but what we are. It also makes <laughs> underground sense. pop. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. I think anything goes now, Johnny. I yeah. mean, I think They're anything words, goes and, right? and you know, the the <clears> older <throat> older school like we still appreciate all that music too we love that music and love the bands that are just rocking and rolling like john d graham and people that have been doing the straight up rock and roll for forever you know and still bring it we love that but i also love like mixing it up and changing we've done that too you know we've done the americana thing i played harmonica on stage i've played an acoustic. <laughs> <laughs> i sang about places in america yeah I've, I've, she's, a, she's a good harmonica player. i never rhymed that's abilene that's and so gasoline sad. i never rhymed those two things yeah. but <laughs> that's so funny that's my defense where i'll say like when someone asks me like what i do and i'm like oh i'm a singer songwriter and i'm like but i've never like gone from abilene to san Antonio in a right. song i just want you Have to you know mentioned that. lone star never going <laughs> anywhere <laughs> yeah see and again we're all singer songwriters you're yeah. a singer songwriter but i would so much more call you rock and roll i just said like you're one of my favorite rock and roll bands so you know well, thank you I mean, that's like that's like rock and roll like you deliver. Thanks, man. <laughs> or it's an attitude, man, and you've always had rock. it. Pop rocks. <laughs> that's yeah. I'm always that's, just jealous yeah. of your attitude. Uh, yeah. You're you're uh, not jealous in a bad way. Just I think you're a badass on stage. Thank you. I yeah. you know I'm I'm scared and confused on stage, and I think it comes off in some way. My <laughs> my facial expression in that moment, it just seems like laid back. <laughs> and unaffected, but I am freaking out inside. And for some reason, my resting face in that thing is very aloof. So I think that's I think that's what it is. That and chewing gum, <laughs> which I learned from my mother taking me to see uh, "Let's Spend the Night Together." Remember that that Stones from the '81 tour? They they what put it out in movie? the theaters. I yeah, oh, it came oh out I, the didn't theaters. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Well, I just started my first band. I went, my mom took my first band to go see it. And like, I was watching him chewing gum. And like, that's what I took away from the whole thing. I was like, you chew gum the whole time. It looks so cool. <laughs> it looks like he's just walking down the street. Um, God, I would so choke on the gum. I would choke yeah, on would the be. gum in like a heart. Let me tell you about what it's like choking on the gum on stage. It's happened three times to me. One oh, time no. it got stuck and it wouldn't go either way. Oh, God. So I was bent over at the hip going <laughs> in front of a you're huge like a, crowd. Like a cat with a hairball. Yeah, exactly. In front of a huge crowd. It was awesome. Oh, my God. So um, did it come out or did it go down? Uh, they usually end up going down. It's the sad part. Uh, <laughs> you get that weird minty burn in your stomach. Oh my god, I'm crying right now. I'm laughing so hard. Um what 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 pop music are you listening to? Like on a go uh, you're a Billie Eilish person. I've seen you post about that, right? 
No, you, I mean, no? I like her. I, I, I don't own her album, but I like what I've heard. Um, I mean, uh, what have I been listening to? I need to pull up my iTunes. Honestly, I've been listening to recently a lot of like um, the deer and stuff yeah. like that. I've been listening to stuff that's more uh, kind of soothing, like to my soul, just because that's what I need right now. Just because I have a lot of panic and anxiety and this COVID stuff brings it all up. So I kind of live in that state every day off and on. So um, listening to stuff like that just makes me go. <sighs> yeah. You know? The last record's really good. Yeah. The, uh, the deer? The, like, yeah. Yeah. The deer. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, beautiful. Um, the, yeah. I've been listening to Phoebe Bridgers. I've been listening That's to... Um, Oh, the I just uh, downloaded the Star Parks record, which is really good. Are you freaking out on that? It's really that was cool. Danny, uh, Danny, Danny did that too. Danny didn't he? did that, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they talk about nerding out. I mean, those guys nerded out yeah, on that yeah. record to get yeah. that Beach Boy stuff. Yeah, it's great. It sounds awesome. Uh, so yeah, a lot of local stuff. Um, I download a lot of singles and stuff, so they're just always running on my on my iTunes as I'm working on the computer and stuff. But. Um, Daisy, I listen to a lot of Daisy. I'm listening to Shawnee's new record; is really beautiful. Oh um, yeah, it really is. Do you guys hear Allie Holder's new record? I haven't Don't. downloaded it yet. I need to download it's that fantastic. one. Fantastic. On yeah. Also, the just, Eliza a lot of Gilkerson. people are put, putting out some cool jams. Like um, Lizzie just put out this. Did you hear that Skin on Skin song that she did with Jinx McGee? Lizzie no. Lehman. Yeah, it's really cool. Like queer pop. Awesome Lizzie queer Lehman. Pop. Yes. Yeah, I love her. Uh, so anyway, yeah, just kind of trying to support the local people, download their music, and there really is. There's almost like a never-ending supply of new and great music of all kinds here. You know what I mean? (laughs) Like it's kind of weird after a little while. Like it never ends, and there's (laughs) so much great like pop music now that I feel like. I, you know, when I talk to pop, like straight up pop people on here, their thing is like, you know, same the same way hip hop people feel here. Like this isn't, I don't think people <laughs> notice like outside of the city limits, what we do is the most popular thing in the world. But when you yeah. come here, people are like, yeah, we don't, we don't have this kind of music in our club. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, it's a sad, I think it's kind of a sad scene for the hip hop and everything here. I wish it was. It was thriving a little bit more. We could really use that. I don't know where people would play, or like you said, there's not a lot of clubs doing all that kind of stuff. So we're we're lacking in that. But but Austin is. I mean, we're always thinking like I think we need to think way more outside of our box here than we do. You know, like BMI just finally came here. We don't, yeah. I, I'm ASCAP, so that doesn't even help me. Where the hell is ASCAP? Have you got Have you gone and met Mitch yet? No, the I'm ASCAP. BMI guy. No, I'm. I, I don't, I'm asked up too, but I went and met with him. Oh. He's he's a he's a total. He's not. He's not a. a it's not like you can't go. Oh, I didn't realize. Yeah, the, he's a he's a he's an all inclusive cat, man. <laughs> <laughs> he is. A, he's a really. You guys, you guys should meet him. He's really. He's he's yeah. a very supportive dude. He goes out every single night and sees music. At least one oh, band. Amazing. Yeah. See, but why? Yeah. Why don't? Why aren't we represented by our own? our own people you know we have a song that just came out on netflix today and in, in a series you and, did uh, well yeah it's, it's an instrumental version um that they use of safe from love on uh, on episode the last episode of a new show called outer banks um but you know that's yeah. all through like all that stuff happens through our our contacts that we've had forever you know back from the bay area and the la days when we lived there you know we hustled back then and we had a lot of we scored films and did a lot of stuff like that. And we were always kind of making contacts. We had a film that we had a short film that we scored that was in Sundance. Like mm-hmm, it had yeah. Sam Rockwell and Mary McCormick and um, Emma, Emma, and not Emma, uh, forget her last name. Thompson? Anyway. No, Roberts. The one, yeah, the, yeah, Julia Roberts' niece or whatever. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Anyway, so we went to Sundance and <clears throat> all those people kind of stuck with us. And um, this one woman, is an editor and she's been helping to place our songs in LA and stuff since then working on different shows and stuff. So it's been great, but that's some good mailbox money, but we have to think outside of Austin. We can't just 
we're, we won't make any money. We won't do any business if we just stay here. We got to, you know. Oh. Yeah, we are. We are a Black Fret nominee this year. Oh, you are. Great. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, well, awesome. thanks. But, you know, but that's again, money that can help here, you here. get out of Austin some more. Yeah. You know, yeah, there's it's funny because I'm glad that you brought that up. There's a, there's a lot of, uh, hey, man, we got to get paid a lot more money to play music here because I have to go out of town to make money. But then I'm always like wondering, like, what city is there that you don't have to leave to go like <laughs> What city can you just play every night in the same city and it doesn't, I mean, I know the gigs are available, but, but there is kind of like there. Yeah. I don't, I, don't, I, I mean, don't, I don't think there's anywhere where, I mean, it, that's, that's the thing with Austin is that people are basically just thinking about gigs, like performing live. Right. And you're right. Like I was watching an interview with someone, they were talking about playing in New York in, in the eighties and they're like, yeah, you know, you go and you play a gig and you make a hundred bucks, you know? Yeah. In New York in the eighties, right? That's what we, we make here, right? If you make a hundred bucks at a gig, you go, Oh, that's cool. So yeah, the the economy the gig economy playing live doesn't really work. You know? I mean yeah. the the good thing in Austin is you can play a lot. That's a good thing, right? Like Yeah, but we have but the thing is we have like <clears throat> film festivals. Well, now we don't this year, but we, right. we we do normally. We have other ways for people to connect with if they want to use their musicality in different ways to, to monetize and to be creative in different ways. I mean, how cool is it? Like, I never forget seeing like up on a giant screen to see the music and the songs that we, you know, it's just such a cool way to have yeah. your songs put to, to film it takes on a whole different meaning you know yeah. and I write songs from watching things all the time so I feel like deeply connected to how much tv and film influence me as a writer all the time I write from song from that so I think we have ways that we could get more creative but it would help if we had more industry here I mean we just need more industry in yeah. Austin I, I, I feel two ways about it. I do understand. Yeah, we used to have it. I was going to say, you should have been here in the late eight, 90s and early 2000s. <laughs> we had an ASCAP person here and there was no BMI person. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. They, yeah. But they to me, um, to me, I think it's fine that there isn't a lot of industry here because that's why we're... We have this strong community. We can work out our shit and then take it out on the road and show other people. You know what I mean? Like I, I yeah, feel yeah, like I agree. no, yeah. you're you're super right about that. Like it keeps it more like we're our little, own little secret kind of. Yeah, and then we um, let the secret out when it's ready to go. Yeah, you know. Yeah, we're guys. I just, I'm, we're, I'm just saying that like you have to put your business hat on beyond just like the gig mentality. Oh and sure. Think of ways to sure. monetize, especially now and and ask people if they know people in, in places that are still paying for music, commercial work or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. That, that, Cause we all need to get paid. Yeah. But you think of guys like, you know, like uh, Will and Charlie Sexton, like uh, Gary Clark Jr. They had the freedom to become those people. Right. In the, both having the stage time, and having the guidance of a community of people ahead of them in their careers and older than them to sort of help show them the way without the pressure of, uh, you know, Irving Azoff and David Geffen happening, yeah. <laughs> happening yeah. to be there to see the band after you and like ruining your career or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, totally. <clears throat> no, it's true. Like we were and talking that's one to... of the things I think is special, but no, go ahead. No, you're uh, right. You're right. Yeah, We were talking to someone about that, like the LA thing, you know, and, and how it, you know, LA has all the business and all the stuff, but that doesn't have the community and it kind of can, you know, chew you up and spit you out. And, and I used to cry every time we went to LA to play a showcase. <laughs> she, uh, I cried. She gets so depressed I to play cried. a show and she was like, oh my I God. I was so depressed. And like, you'd play, I think, we, I can't remember if we've talked about this before, but you know, I used to call it the LA, se the LA semicircle. It was like this giant semicircle that would be in front of the stage. Everybody would stand like this. Of, and they would have their arms crossed. And yeah. no one would, until one person decided that you were cool. Right. And they would move into the middle of the semicircle. And then everyone, 
one would move in because it was like a lemming. Like there were a bunch of lemmings. They're like, oh, we, just follow that one dude because we that played uh, we played Space Land, and it, that's literally what happened. Like, we started the set. Everyone's in the back, you know. Like, who are these guys? Should I like these people? Are they cool? You know. And then like one two person. people stepped up and were like digging it, and then oh, okay. Hey, yeah, you know, by the end of the show, people had filled Dear in. Dear Lord, it used to like, make me on, sob. And then I'd say every time, we're never doing that again. And then sure enough, <laughs> someone would call, hey, you want a showcase for Interscope? Okay, we're we'll be down next week. Yeah. God, like, like you know, it's like bait to a fish or something. Yeah, and, and you know, that's the thing. In 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 Austin, it's you, you play a show and half the people in the audience are musicians. You know, it's all your friends and <laughs> people from other bands going, hey, what are these guys doing? And so, like you said, that's really nurturing. And uh, it's really and it helps you people. to me, it helps you develop. I mean, you know, when yeah. I, I mean, I st I'm still in that, you know, when you guys come and see me play, you know, I'm hoping that if I'm doing something that you're like, hey, you got to not do that thing. We need to talk a little. Yeah. You know, you know that chewing there gum was, thing that you're doing? Yeah, that's just chewing gum. <laughs> you got to stop that. You're, that's a deal you're gonna breaker. Die. You're going to choke. <laughs> that's a deal breaker. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, like, you know, uh, just even people like Hallman being there, you know, people yeah. that have, have been on all sides of this thing and being able to sort of like, I think what I was going to say is that he, I think he a couple of times has been like, you know, you know, that, that one song or that thing, like you want to, you want me to help you with that? <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I like what you're trying to do. You sound all right. Let me know if you want to co-write. <laughs> yeah. Was yeah. The thing, Will, speaking of Will Sexton, he was, he was always like, well, you were too loud and your tone sucked, but <laughs> <laughs> Is that what he used to say? <laughs> that was just a joke, you know. Oh like, my god! Nice set, man. You know, you're you're too, too loud. loud. Your tone sucks. sucks. But other than that, you were great. <laughs> oh my god! We I've been watching a little bit of that show, Songland. Have you watched that, Johnny? No. Oh uh, well, it's just interesting because it's exactly what we we're just talking about. It's like one person goes in and pitches their song to all these like mega songwriters. And then the mega songwriters like take it and chop it and squeeze it and ring it and make it an entirely different song and then pitch it to the big band that's on that week. Like yesterday was like Lady Antebellum or something. It is like what this poor people, you know, they go in there and like, I got this awesome song by the time it's done. It's like, yes, maybe it's a hit, but it's fucking horrible. Yeah, 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 exactly. So it's just like it's, horrible. And it's, it's like so, food it's like been processed and exactly all these exactly put into yeah. it and you're like that doesn't taste oh good. god i mean oh god anyway yeah it was pretty sad are do is there any do people are, there's got to be some people throwing fits when these people change their songs and no everything, right? they don't they're super psyched because it's a great opportunity because some big band's going to cut their song but at that point think about the songwriting there's four major songwriters or something up there plus the person who originally wrote it so by the time it's all said and done, the band, everybody's getting writing credit. So it's like split between like six major writers. So yeah. your portion of the song probably becomes like 2%. But shit, if that's what you want, if you want a hit song, if you want to be a hit songwriter. You know, man, I, I, what you just said, I think is what's divorced me to a certain extent from mainstream culture outside of Tiger King. <laughs> I, the, you know, like movies are like that. You know, a movie has a writer in it, but there's like 48 dudes that wrote on that movie. You yeah. know, oh, the jokes aren't punchy enough. Let's bring in like super famous comedians that you all, we all know and love. And, you know, they spend their days like writing snappy Denzel Washington lines or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. But I think that that sort of like process It's I mean, like now when you see a lot of pop records, I mean, there's more songwriters than people that played on the record. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like a Beyonce track or, you know, any of that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's seven, eight people, and it's because they wrote a line or something. I don't someone know. Someone did the beats. Someone yeah. did, like, some key. I don't know what, what, what they're doing. I mean, it's <laughs> – what are they doing? I don't know. <laughs> I, but then again, it's, it's also that thing of, like, I, I kind of see it like, hey, man, come come in here and do something, you know? Cause, yeah, like it – are you know, people what is the thing – Sorry, in for sorry, a sorry. word, in for a third, or something. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, are people is it, it or are people finally getting credit? You know, because how many times have 
have we all been in a thing where we suggest something and it yeah. it goes into a song and you know you get no credit like yeah you know that's the trippy thing about like recording on logic is that there's all these samples so you're using these samples and it's like shit that could be in someone else's song like you could hear someone else's song and they have the exact same shit but it's maybe done in a totally different way fine but it still makes it like it's risky yeah you know yeah. but i'm still doing it because it's fun and it's it's new for me but um but yeah i mean you do you want to be i guess a little bit careful about but, how much you use and stuff at a certain yeah point. i mean like what was it maybe 10 years ago i was I was teaching a class at ACC that was all about MIDI. It was basically about sequencing. And, and so we were using reason and I would watch, you know, a TV show, like a cable, you know, whatever, a cooking show or so, or whatever. And you right, know, I'm right. like, I know that reason loop. That's number 43. You know, I, can, I just heard it the other day as so, yeah. and they didn't even change it. It's just like, Oh yeah, that's, you know, that's the seventh loop you hit when you go under whatever style and yeah, you know, yeah. So, but it's on a TV show, so it's not really that important. If it was in somebody's song, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> to, to me, all that stuff lies within the intention where you can look at someone like... To me, it's like uh, like Warholian. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's, it's whatever it takes to make the art. Or Eno, whatever, yeah. you know, Brian Eno. Like whatever it takes to make this art. And Bowie... And like, as I'm kind of I'm kind of wondering like now that pop music has taken on the same characteristics as hip hop, using mm -hmm. the same loops, same hi hat, you know, all that that kind of stuff. Like, I wonder what's going to happen in hip hop. Like, I would love to see hip hop go back to almost like the days of like jazz metaz, and I would love to see hip hop do something totally new to get away from the sound that it has been doing so that, you know, cause all these like white pop artists started jacking all those same exact parts, you know? Right. Yeah, right. So at, at a certain point, it's like, what's hip hop versus pop. If you're just rapping over it or you're singing over it, it's the same samples and the same kind of well, beats and drop drops and everything, you know? Well, there's alternative hip hop. I'd love to, I mean, I would love to see more of that. Pop now, you know? I would love to see more of that because I think, you know, hip hop's been the leader in a lot of ways for a lot of different kind of, things that people try to do after it has yeah. already happened. So, but it's kind of, kind of like John, what you were saying, you know, it, it is kind of that postmodern aspect of sampling because you look at, you know, the Amen drum break or uh, Apache or funky drummer. And those things have been sampled so many times, yeah. but each time it's sampled, it's a new song and it. Yeah. So, well, it's the same sample, but okay. But do something different with it. You'd say the same thing with the chord progression, Every blues song is three chords, yeah. but they don't all sound the same. So. <laughs> yeah. Or rock songs. How many songs are G, C, and D? Can you do something different with it? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Those are, uh, that's always been a thing that, that gets me. Like when I'm having a hard time writing a song, then I'm like, there are only 12 fucking notes that we <laughs> all have to deal with. Like, yeah. I have to deal with the same 12 notes that like Burt Bacharach has to deal with. Yeah. Like, what is that all about? How you, how you put them together. That is. Sometimes it feels impossible. Sometimes yeah. it feels like as easy as pie. I don't know why. Yeah. Sometimes it just comes to you and it's like, and then other times it's like beating, a, you know, and I just have to stop and get away from it for a while and come back, you know. I want to, I want to have fun. Like I want to have fun writing music. I'm too old to be like not having fun, you know. If yeah. we're still in this game we're still doing this. It's like, it has to be enjoyable. Yeah. That's how I feel, you know, but we are having fun. Oh, we are now. Yeah. Like, it, it, <laughs> no, I mean, we really are. We are having, fun. not during COVID, but we are having fun, you know, but fuck. I mean, there were a lot of years where everything was stressful. Yeah. And, and yeah. going in the studio was so stressful. So stressful. You know, like, Got to cut my vocals today. It's like, Oh my God. You know? And now it's like, Oh cool. Let's go run some vocals. It's just, everything's so chill for us now. You think that's the maturity? Do you think that's like, and I don't mean like even age wise, I just mean like having done the 10,000 hours and you're like, all right. Yeah. 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 I, I used to get so kind of, <clears throat> I don't know, I guess wrapped in my head, like, you know, oh, it's time to do your guitar part. I'd be like, oh shit, what am I going to play? You know, what, yeah. what guitar should I use? And I would just get very wrapped up in 
you know, all of that. And like, this is, this has got to be it, you know? And then, but now it's just like, all right, let's throw down a part, you know, let's see what happens. You know? so, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think a lot of it is like the 10,000 hours you've done it enough times that you just, it just flows and you're like, Oh yeah, I should do this. You know? it, it kind of goes back to what you were saying in the beginning, Johnny, about the beginning of the conversation, like about us now creating the way we are are we able to kind of let go that question that you asked earlier mm -hmm. it's like yeah you know i find myself really perfectly okay with not knowing everything and not being right and not it's it's a totally different place right now for me mentally than it was when i was in my 20s and 30s where i had so much attachment yeah, yeah. And my ego was so attached yeah, to yeah, me yeah. right and now i'm like Mm, do you guys like this? Cause I think I like it, but I'm okay. If no, you know, I, I'm okay. Totally. My, you can't hurt my ego. You can't fuck with me in a way that you could have back yeah. in the day. You know, I don't yeah. feel fragile. <clears throat> uh, that's important. That's good. You know, I, I, I hope that there continues. Cause I feel like the audience broadens for maturing artists. I just talked with this guy. You guys know who Roger Manning is. He was in that band jellyfish. Yeah. And uh, he has a new band with the other guys from Jellyfish and they're putting out an EP and I was talking with him and it's the same kind of thing. It's almost like you finally become like tolerable, tolerable egotistically. <laughs> you know what I mean? As you get older, yeah. yes. you, you finally get like really good and you finally yeah. learn how to let go of yourself in the process to only serve the song and try yeah. to make the best creation we can make that you don't really have that in your, you don't have the ability to separate yourself like that in your twenties. Yet this business revolves around this, yeah. this like not fully developed thing and like the craziness involved in it. You know what I mean? Like, I guess it's no, a, yeah. it's a no, lot less dramatic to be a mature musician who has it together. <laughs> but yeah, completely, completely. But, the, but God, I'm so over those other times. I think back, me like, too, man, on how much agony I caused myself, or the industry caused me, or I don't know what was the point of it, but <sighs> it just felt so freaking stressful all the time. Like, you know, I mean, even recently, it's like maybe it's because we don't tour because we just physically, and you know, just can't afford to tour. We just yeah. money wise can't afford to we tour a little bit but shit it cost us uh like six grand or something to take the entire band out to california last year for four shows um and we made six grand but only because i brought my jewelry that i sell that's the only reason why we broke even yeah yeah I merch. Merch, the merch. <laughs> but but, uh, but it's too expensive but i don't know I, I used to just stress me out so much, all that stuff, booking the tours, exactly, yeah. and, and this person, this this label wants to look at us, and, yeah. da, 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 and you know, it just, now I'm like, let's just create. But that's the thing, we were also chasing that, the thing of like, you know, yeah. let's get signed, and, you know, having the sound, <laughs> yeah. that, that's where the next whatever, and, you know, I think at a certain point, if you let that go, and you're just like, look, we're making music because this is what's coming out, and we like it. Yeah. Yeah, cool. and I do. I you I know, I, else likes it. I really love the stuff that's that's coming out and that is going to come out. Like, there's some really cool stuff that's coming up. I mean, should I have a disco song that we're hoping to put out in the summertime? That is so much fun. Uh, I need a summer it, jam. Oh yeah, it's going to be a cool summer jam. Just I'm I'm all over the place, and I don't care. I don't care at all. It's still I love me. it. I mean, I'll I'm be so honest with you. Here. I'll be honest. I, I feel like this is the best work you guys have ever done. Thanks. I mean, this Me is, too. this is, Jeez, I love it. Thanks. Thank you. I, feel I mean, the same. I don't know if it's just cause it's new and it's exciting, but, and also like having watched you guys just grow as artists, you know, the whole time, not like you weren't grown before, but just that you're always growing. I, I just, yeah. that's, that's something that's very impressive to me and every song and record always seems to be a new step from the last. Yeah. Jeez, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah man. I mean, it, I, I appreciate that. And I noticed that with a lot of my friends around town too, I watch their progress and what they're doing and just seeing like the newer songs that they put out versus a couple years ago. It's just, it's kind of unbelievably amazing what's happening. Like you were saying, like with just our people, just this community, let alone around the world, there's a lot of great music. There great is. music. Yeah. You know what? I'm sorry. Something I meant to say, and I don't want it to go unsaid. 
I think the reason why I like that Billie Eilish album so much is because it was just her and her brother. Yeah. And it's not 52 songwriters on every... It's yeah. like a very yeah. pure vision. And it's also so different because it's that way. You know, like yeah. nobody got their hands in there and said, Billy, you need to sing louder right, or yeah. you need to do this. Yeah, yeah, she just yeah, yeah. whispers. She whispers yeah. into the microphone and it's like, okay, that's cool. We need you to sound more yeah. like Lady Gaga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah. hope that, you know, all the young people that listen to that that are coming up, I'm sure all of them are listening to this podcast right now. You know, all those like hey, kids. 17, this 18 is, year this olds. This is very you know? popular with the, with yes, the young people. Very popular with the young, <laughs> we, with the young ones. <laughs> but I hope all of those people are just going to do what she does. I, I think everyone just do what you do. Like I, as a vocal coach, I'm always trying to tell people, don't try to sound like that person. Like it's yeah. hard for us not to, to emulate that, but try to get your tone, try to get your thing. That sounds so freaking cool. Just you, you know? Yeah. You know what? We all start out trying to kind of cop someone. Of course, our, of course. Who, who was who was yours, Andre? <clears throat> Probably a combination of like Andy Summers and The Edge. Okay, and I remember that. You know, I mean, I was a huge U two fan, especially those first like the first three records. Yeah, yeah. And then, but I try to explain this to a lot of people because it's like it's that chasing that thing, and then you get there. And someone comes up and you goes, hey, you sound like the Edge. <laughs> and you're like, you know, and I've had that. I had that with the Edge. I had that with David Gilmore from Pink Floyd, Mark yeah. Knopfler. Um, and, you know, someone comes, hey, you sound a lot like Mark Knopfler. And you're like. <laughs> but you're also like, <laughs> awesome. I mean, that's a, it is a compliment. I mean, I mean, for me, at least, it was that, hey, I want someone to come up and say, I like your sound. You, that's an Andre sound. Or, you know, yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know. Maybe that's my ego is, you know, I want to sound like me. And I think that. you do. You sound very much like you. Well, thank you. Yeah. Very but yeah. Much. But, it, you know, like you were saying, it's, it is a process of, we start out by emulating things and then, I mean, you learn songs, you learn someone else's songs, you learn a guitar lick and then you're like, Oh, cool. I know how to play this thing. And then it's, well, okay, I need to do my thing. Yeah. Right. What, was just your, what was yours, Johnny? Who did yeah. you want to sound like? Um, it, well, mostly I, I'm not joking. I wanted to sound like Mark Hallman and awesome. because, he because he was, he was there right when I started and I really, I looked up to him Yeah. Uh, and, and, and he really has a phenomenal fucking voice. Yep. Yeah. Like it's a, it's a pretty, it has huge range and, you know, great power. Yep. And, uh, you know who calls his ex-wife uh, Kathleen Katya? Anytime she hears a song of mine, she's like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> like, dude, you are like little Mark. So that's a huge thing. But like, I don't know, like Robin Zander. I mean, Bono was a huge. I think anybody, you know, I know that in times of my sort of like uh, twenty years ago, my career, people pointed out a lot of Radiohead. And I feel like there was that it wasn't Radiohead that like they're my age, Chris Martin, like we all got like the OK from Bono to be as operatic and like uh, yeah. sort of like men, dramatic men with really, our singing as possible. Men you know? really sang back then. They sang their asses off. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like psychedelic furs and all those bands. The men had such powerful like oh, yeah. simple minds and oh, yeah. and uh talk talk yeah. all those bands like such beautiful singing from the men echo and the bunnyman was a big one for me too and that guy was a real dramatic yeah. singer yeah oh chris uh, nelson sent uh andre a, a track from uh one of his bands in the 80s and he sounded exactly like a depeche mode dude what's it what do you sing like this yeah like, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah that baritone what was that what was that band maybe i that's the band that, uh, what was the band he texted uh, andre Hold yeah. on, look it up. oh my god mine was more like the lilith fair chicks i was like sean colvin and cheryl crow and all that oh mark of kane that was his band mark i remember that name yeah, it's a kill. It's a great it's, track. It's, I mean, it's he sounds so, awesome, but he definitely yeah. sounds like that dude. Yeah, Chris. What's his name? Dave Gahan. I'm so bad with names. Dave Gahan. Yeah. So wait, yours? Did you have a specific person though that you went after? Not just Me? all of those people. Yeah. Uh, probably Sean the most because okay. I was learning how to play guitar from her from listening to her as well. 
So I probably, and, and that was a very kind of accessible voice to have kind of that smaller thing. At first, I think I wanted to do the Indigo Girls and I sang like really, oh, like, oh, you know, <laughs> like I'm a chick singer, I'm a chick rock singer. And then like I pulled back and wanted to do the Sean Colvin more like fragile emotional kind of a thing yeah yeah um and i'm glad it maybe i attempted both because somewhere in the middle i learned that softness and i learned like but i fucked my voice up really early i had to relearn how to sing and, and stuff so anyway that's a whole other journey but <laughs> now i'm happy with what i'm doing i'm happy I with sound, like yeah you. i sound like me you do sound like you you know yeah. uh the indigo girls i i have a cousin and he and his boyfriend his ex-boyfriend were uh, like event guys. His boyfriend was an event guy and, and they would do these huge events. And my cousin went to high school with Perez Hilton, the uh-huh. gossip oh. guy. Yeah. And uh, who, by the way, I got to meet through him. And honestly, I know I met him in the context of through his friends, but he was so nice that I like, I was almost like in shock. Like, wow. he was a really <laughs> nice man. But Sweet. I went to this party he had during South by Southwest, and it was like a just a gay disco extravaganza. And I was Fabulous. having the best time of my life. He had all these people, and they would only play uh, they would only play three songs a piece. But it was like Solange Knowles and nice. like this this woman Lady Hawk, who was like this gay disco oh, woman yeah. who was really awesome. Had a couple really great songs, and then like in the middle of it, the Indigo Girls came out. Wow. And did their song, but like... Closer to fine? Yeah. And man, <laughs> I I walked around just complaining, though. There's like, this is not a party jam in any yeah, way. Like, this just is not. like, I understand that the Indigo Girls, they stand for something. They're way more famous than all these other people playing, but they just killed our party. So ever since then, <laughs> every time I hear the Indigo Girls, I'm like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> It's a little bit more, it was a little bit more listening music than anything. Yeah. Oh my God. I just was watching. Uh, did you see my post about seeing myself on that show, Little Fires Everywhere? Did no, you, see you that? were in that show. <laughs> so I'm watching this show that's on Hulu now with like Reese Witherspoon and, um, and uh, I'm watching it and the, the daughter is like struggling with her sexuality. I'm not giving away too much, but she's struggling with her sexuality and her mom, cuts out this article on the Lilith Fair because it takes place in the 90s. <laughs> and so put, she cuts out this article and she leaves it on her on her table and the girl picks up the article and it's like, it's fucking me. It's me on, the, on, on this giant picture on this article. It's me singing on the mic with Natalie Merchant <laughs> with uh, Sarah McLaughlin. It had Tara McLean and, the, and uh, Emily. What, Emily from the Indigo Girls? Indigo One of Girls. Them. And we're all on stage together singing on these mics. And it was the last song of the night at the Lilith Fair. And I didn't even know this picture existed. I had no idea this picture existed. And I was like, well, both of us are watching the show. Do, 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 do. All of a sudden, there I am. What? That, I'm like, that's Wait, me. pause. Back up. Pause. Rewind. Why? It's like, <laughs> why am I on this show? This is fucking crazy. So then I posted it. And then someone did the research and found that that picture was also used in Rolling Stone. What? I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, I was Did in you Rolling not Stone, know that? Huh? Look, Ma, no, I had no idea. <laughs> but it was in Rolling Stone, like, like as a like three, retrospective, but four years ago. Or yeah, so, oh. like a couple like, years yeah, ago. So yeah, it's weird. Yeah, Bizarre. And, and it was yeah, an article about the little. Affair. So yeah, if you're watching Little old, Fires Everywhere yeah. and you see that, uh, you see that article pop up. That's me with the platinum blonde hair singing on the mic with Natalie Merchant. That is awesome. In that yellow sweater. In that yellow sweater, I look like a little peep, like Did a little. Yeah. Uh, Easter peep. <laughs> did you did you see like Casey or Trish during that time? You know, Casey was on that tour. I think she was actually. I think she played that show in San Francisco. I can't remember, but um, a lot of the people weren't on the same tour. They had right, regional. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Lilith so, yeah. Fair. Trippy. Was that Trippy. fun Old being school. at Lilith Fair? Yeah, it was fun. It was like a. It was such a exciting time for women and music. You know, a lot. of women don't understand today how much it took for for people to even be considered you know oh, in this yeah. industry in the past and and sarah and all those women they they broke a lot of ground and they created a lot of hype for women artists it was it was needed yeah yeah 
You know, I just uh, read that Kathy Valentine book, which I highly recommend her. I want to read that. I really yeah. want to read that. We'll, we'll order a copy. But there's an interesting, uh, yeah, you know, she wrote and recorded some songs that go along with chapters, too, which is a very unique. That's cool. Uh, you know, in this time when it's like raining rock and roll <laughs> memoirs, she really found a, a unique, and she's, I'm, I can't, like, I I was blown away on a lot of levels, like the the her uh she's extremely brave to expose her life in that way yeah. to be that mm-hmm. honest and so open and 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 self-reflective in a real honest way anyway in that book uh you know the challenge that the go-go's had or that the any women had back then seemed to come from uh the industry and the yeah. people yeah. in the industry that the people that always had her back and never wanted to sexualize or do anything like that was uh, 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 guys in music. Mm. Like mm. her musician friends. Throughout the book, that's a theme. Like as much as those other people in the business would screw you around, the dudes in the music were actually feminists in a way. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Seeing Seeing what badasses you were... For who yeah. you were, yeah. not for being a woman, but for being a badass musician. Yeah, and, and they respect that. you yeah. on that on a straight up musical level, as opposed to how an A and R guy or a thank God for guy. that. That's been the case for us as well. I mean, thank God for that because shit, there was a lot of. I mean, I I played showcases where like literally they said we can't sign you because we have Cheryl Crow. Like, uh, right, we already have a girl. One, we have one girl. Okay, yeah. well, well, whatever. We don't need to talk about that. But it's just ridiculous. It was yeah. ridiculous. And the, or, going back to what Andre said, glad we didn't do it. Yeah, but I mean, I remember um, Jen Trinan. Mm-hmm. She was a Boston artist, and so I met her when I was working at Q Division in, in Boston. And uh, she had this, a similar thing then, which was ninety mid nineties, early nineties. And it was like, you know, she was labeled an angry woman, and Alanis had already been signed because <laughs> yeah, she had an attitude. You know, she was already have an angry woman. Yeah, yeah, we have one angry that, woman. Yeah, we have one of those. You know, so nobody, we're good. You know, we're not going to sign you. Nobody thought of uh, that with the angry guy grunge movement. Oh yeah, we. Can, I think we, talk, we talked about that before. That that, that I always say the guy that the guys that sound like they're taking a shit while they're singing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that old, you know, it's like how many of those were there in the nineties? Way too many. A lot of them. <laughs> There's a lot. Like, of I just I just read. Uh, you know, Liz Fair had a similar thing of, you know, A&R guys, uh, you know, hey, uh, this, if you want to you know, show some so, show some legs, show yeah. some cleavage, you know, Bob, you know. Have you I heard have... Liz Fair? Because yeah. that's really not what yeah. it's about. Yeah. yeah. Shit. Glad to be out of all that. The industry yes. is not really the industry anymore. So now we just get to be creative and try to hustle our ass off. Yeah, I do like that about it, too. I, I do like ultimately like the fact that we have control again. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just it's just compet it's just competitive uh, as far as visual presence. We have to find creative ways to be visual in front of people now. So that's the challenge in front of me. Well, I thought with that video that you made, um, I'm drawing a blank on the song name. Uh, Make a villain. Yes, that was amazing. Yeah. Thanks, but stunning. it also cost us ten thousand dollars or something so yeah can't do those you know you can do those maybe once in a lifetime or something but i can't yeah. who's i'd rather make 10 new songs yeah yeah that's true personally. so if, there, it is a cool if there are filmmakers out there or anybody making creative things out there that want to approach us and do some video concepts i'm super open but we have to do things on a budget and they deserve right. to get paid too you know i don't want to underscore anyone it's just yeah. Right. Yeah, of course. Just, you just can't well, afford it. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, I know. I'd like to have luck out the Congress house for four months and record, yeah. but that's just not something I can do. Yeah. I could just going to try and slowly move back in there. You should. <laughs> that front room. Yeah. yeah that, that room is still this, available. The slow move. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me ask you uh, one last serious question. If you were, to, oh, are, is, have you been talking to Black Fret throughout this thing? Is there, um, is there it's still been, some? It's been very, uh, it's kind of strange. I mean, it, they're so awesome. They're trying to navigate how to do this right now. And I can tell it's kind of torture for them right sure. now. Because, 
they wanted to be celebrating. I we haven't been in a room with all of the other nominees. We haven't been able to connect with that. There's no there's not that feeling yet of like the community that's around that. So I'm I'm sort of sad about that, but they're still trying to help. They're trying to figure out ways they can help us this year, help us promote things. Um, they're trying to you know hold on to members and make sure that members don't go anywhere, yeah. um, which is important because that's going to help all of us. And we'll see. So right now it's about kind of finding ways that mentors can help us. Uh, and for us, that's promotion mostly. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um, you know, uh, their, their live stream thing when this started was great. You guys were on there. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was really yeah. cool. Yeah, you sounded great. And Thanks. It was a little nerve wracking, like in general, because everybody's nerves were really yeah, yeah, on, yeah. on yeah. edge. But yeah. but they did it well, and it, and yeah. I enjoyed it. And it was just nice to see the band and and to play. Know, yeah, yeah, just to play for a minute. So I uh, I also I, that that one sounded and looked great, and those one to one. But it's funny. Someone was like, "Man, you know that one to one? They got their shit together." And I was like, "They've been. They were doing this. They were, way, doing it they were ready. Kurt, they were like the Kurt only club that. ready to go." Yeah, Kurt, and and it really broke their hearts to have to to shut that down. Yeah. I mean, they were doing it just with the band. Yeah, yeah. And Kurt, and 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 you know, maybe they'll be able to get back to that soon. In the meantime, he has developed this amazing thing that he's doing at home to be able to like record people's streams and put them out like in this room. He's doing some total nerdy thing. Oh. So yeah, you should talk to him. I need he's, like, to because he sent me an thing. email and was asking me these questions. And I was like, those are weird questions. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, <laughs> who is this? He's been like a mad scientist in his lab. So but, yeah, we're just, we got to find our way back to actually playing. There's yeah. nothing like it. There is nothing like it. Um, Outside of what was pretty little liars. Is that what you said? You're, no, it's called Little Fires Little. Everywhere. Okay. Oh, and then the show that our song's in is called Outer Banks. Outer Banks. Okay, yeah, I wrote that. Okay, that's where the song is. Um, is there anything I'm missing? The song drops on, a uh, Golden Hour drops on April 24th. April 24th. Um, yeah, and then we'll have one every month from that point on and just stick with us. Yeah. Find us on our socials and especially Spotify because I was such a rebel. So please follow us on Spotify and like, yeah, just please. please. <laughs> I, I was so pissed at Spotify and I didn't yeah. I didn't promote it forever. So now we're way behind. You know, what's funny. I had someone ask me the other day, like wrote me a thing and very seriously, like, is it uh, would you rather I buy your music on Amazon or on iTunes? And I was like, do you really are you going to listen to it? And they were like, yeah, I was like, you're going to listen to it a lot. And they're like, yeah, I'm like, just go listen to it on Spotify for free. That helps me a lot more. I need this. Space. Yeah. I mean, they both help. But, you know, like someone, a friend just bought our last single Lucid Dream for $50 yesterday or two days ago on Bandcamp. That's awesome. Like on Bandcamp, you can set your own price. Right. So that's awesome. But I always encourage so you both. You set the single at $50. No. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, pay what you want. Yeah, pay what pay you what want. You but, the average, but the average right now especially has been uh, about 15, 15 bucks has been the average of what well, people have been spending for the single. That, so. uh, right now there's a lot of generosity, especially from a lot of the people that, I mean, one thing, I feel like I should do almost a whole show about it is like we have some outrageously supportive fans in this we do. in this we town do. like yeah outrageous yeah. yeah yeah like we're dead in the water without them kind of they're amazing totally totally yeah. I've actually had a couple of them have, I've been doing these Facebook lives like once a week on on my uh, how did I get here page and just like asking hey what do you think Two fans that are like super fans, like named a couple people. I've already done podcasts with them and everything. So yeah, yeah. The, Have you done any coronagrams? Did you do a coronagram? What's a coronagram? Uh, it's like somebody hires you to do a video for someone specifically. So like if I said yes. Johnny, I want you to send. I'm going to pay you to do a coronagram yep. for Mark Hallman, and then I pay you fifty bucks or seventy five or hundred. Yeah. And you write, either have a song or do a cover and you yeah. send it just to Mark or yeah. something like that. Yeah. yeah. I did that. And it's a good way to make some money. It's like a singing <clears throat> telegram in the shitty times that we're in. Yeah. There was a fan of mine had a birthday a couple of weeks ago and and somebody got them that for their birthday, me singing happy birthday. There you go. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I like that. Um, coronagrams. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so weird. 
the things that are coming out of the, the social distancing, the, the words that we're using nowadays yeah, are well, ridiculous. There's but... a whole new lexicon. Of... <laughs> I, I feel like I'm the guy that, that coined the term quorum bait. I, well, I haven't heard. Oh, yeah. To masturbate in, cor- in times of quarantine. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, man. <laughs> Thank it's you. supposed to be it's supposed to be really good for your immune system so why not well you then i should just run around in. i should just run around touching anything i want because i'm <laughs> immune immune <laughs> and on that note <laughs> on that note guys thank you so much for doing the show i hey, i John. i love your music and i love you and we love uh, you too. yeah i just i think the world of you guys both as artists and as human beings and I've known you guys too. almost 20 years at this point. I, know, and I right? still think of you guys as like new in town. Okay, you, know, <laughs> you know, Andre and Noel, they just moved here a couple years here. ago. <laughs> oh my God, it feels like that sometimes. It does. Thank you. But yeah, thank you guys. And I uh, love you. Stay safe. And let's hang out after this thing. Definitely. Okay. All, right. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Andre Moran and Noel Hampton, The Bell Sounds. Find them at thebellsounds.com. Their brand new single, Golden Hour, is out. I'm putting this out after this comes out, so it's out now. Go to bellsounds. thebellsounds.com. You can find them, on, uh, find them on Bandcamp. Go buy their music if that's what you can do right now. You know, Listen to them on Spotify if that's what you can do, but definitely go and help them. And don't forget, man, this is not a hipster-based scene. <laughs> I love that phrase. Uh, what a great conversation. I, I really love them. They're wonderful people. Check out their song on the Outer Banks on Netflix. Outer Banks, that's the name of the show. I can't remember what episode she said, but go check it out. Go get involved. All right, I hope you guys are having a great day. Don't forget when you're out there checking out the bellsounds.com, you can find uh, this podcast wherever it is you stream and download your jams. Be it Spotify, tune in, YouTube, available on YouTube now. If that's where you do if that's where you listen to your podcast, you can find us on YouTube. Anywhere, 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 anywhere they serve the podcast, you'll find how did I get here. Sorry, man. I'm a little punch drunk. I've done like four podcasts today, and I'm ready to just cut loose. Cut loose, baby. Here's some more music from the Bell Sounds. This is their single golden hour available now. Go to thebellsounds.com or find them on Bandcamp. Have a great day, whatever it is you're doing in your quarantine. Take care of yourself. Stay healthy and stay safe. Let's get down. I won't say a word.